And thanks to Yeshoda before Jahel, so. And thanks all of you for coming out this Sunday night in Spanish Fork, Utah. We invite your comments, correspondence, and feedback by email us at utahchristians at gmail.com. We also have a website, utahchristians.org. You're invited to consult the website if you need more information. <clears throat> Everything is inspired by the teachings of His Divine Grace, A.C., Bhaktivedanta Somi Prabhupada. I've never seen you there before. In, in, in 40 years, I've never seen Jaya City in that location. It's like, huh? <laughs> He's always sitting there or there. I mean, literally, this is a 40-year-old habit. That would explain my... Everything is based on the teachings of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who is the founder of charge of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Om Agadanti Manandasya Kananga Sadagya Chaksudu Militam Yena Tajma Ishi Gadade Namaha I'd scream if I got my arm caught between two chairs too. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutade Shimati Bhaktivedanta Shami Tanamane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gaurabhani Pacharine Niyavishesa Sanyavari Prasketa De Sadarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sri Gaurabhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Today our topic is burning off impurities None of us have any impurities, do we? Now we can just skip this and go down for dinner, right? What's a sign that you have impurities in your life? Well, you're all frustrated because you're not getting your way. You're trying to deal with a person who's hard to get along with. You're late for an appointment. You're caught in traffic and some of those bad words are coming out of your mouth. As much as we don't like it, God does allow uncomfortable situations in our lives. Why? The answer is that when we're under pressure, it shows what we're made out of. Uncomfortable situations bring to light impurities in our character. We need to deal with these impurities in order to become the best version of ourselves. Uncomfortable situations show us weaknesses in character, areas that keep us from being our best. Arjuna is the best example of this, as described in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna asked him to kill his teacher, his brothers, and his cousins. Certainly it's not easy to do that, even if they are the bad guys. Imagine if you're a policeman. I'm putting this in a modern-day scenario. You get a call, shots fired, banks being robbed. You pull your cruiser up on the curve, you get out. The perpetrator is just exited the bank and he's turned running away from you down a side street. You give pursuit, you take a bead between his shoulder blades and you say, stop or I'll shoot. And as he's running, he turns around in your direction enough that you can recognize he's your brother. Tough situation. I don't think I can think of any tougher situation, but Krishna the Supreme Personality of God had put his disciple and friend Arjuna into this most difficult, I think you'll agree, most uncomfortable of all situations. Why? To identify and burn off the impurities. And when Arjuna asked for Krishna to walk him through this, Krishna first of all says, Asochams non vasochams tra pragnabhadams tabasasi. The first step in knowledge is to know the difference between this dead, dull, temporary body and the eternal, luminous, spirit, soul, spartan parcel of God that inhabits this body. Krishna says to Arjuna, the wise lament neither for the living nor for the dead. In other words, they don't lament for this body, which has a point of beginning and a point of end. They focus on what's going to purify how I'm going to get the impurities out of the soul. That's what we're here for. Not for any temporarily bodily condition, but to improve the soul. So let Krishna in your life 
bring uncomfortable situations to refine us, to tweak us, to adjust us, and let's recognize them as such so we pass the tests. That's when promotion will come in your life. Arjuna passed the test. As difficult as it was, he fought against his cousins and his brothers, all of whom were on the dark side. His reward was that at the end of his life, as described in the Mahabharata, he went back to home, back to Godhead in the same body. He didn't have to change his body. He didn't have to die per se, but he went back to home just like we read Jesus did on Easter Sunday. Arjuna did the same thing because he passed the test and he burned off all the impurities. So that's the purpose of these uncomfortable situations to test our character. Every traffic jam, you're not going to be asked to kill your relatives in battle, don't worry. But let's bring it down to everyday happenstances. Every traffic jam, every person in front of you in line that's got 40 items in the 10 item line, every teen. Do you ever push your buttons of your parents? Yeah, well, you're, you're testing your parents. <laughs> the coworker who irritates you, talks behind your back at the office. And every time because of that, you're tempted to react, to worry, to be critical, to get jealous, to get discouraged. You have to recognize these are not coming in your life randomly. That's Krishna testing your quality. The problem is that many people get stuck at the very same level because they're not dealing with the things that Krishna or God is bringing to light. Next time someone blows up at you in public for no good reason, stinks up the room with anger at you, I have a suggestion. Bite your tongue. Let them blow off steam. Have their say. Don't provoke them by adding fuel to the fire. What will you be doing? Burning off your impurities. The Pandavas were never, never even in their thoughts did a sinful deed, never even had a bad thought in their lives. And yet they were taken advantage of by their cousin Duryodhana. He raised a crooked game of dice. One minute they were lords of a vast kingdom and the next minute they were cheated of all that in the crooked dam of dice and sent off for 13 years of exile in the forest. They could have been bitter. They could have been discouraged. They could have been resentful. But rather, they took the attitude, this is only a test. Out of the five Pandavas, the biggest and strongest and most impetuous one, who probably should have been in anger management class if he were around today, his name was Bhima. As they were leaving the city, Bhima said, and he had the strength of 10,000 elephants. So he said, wait a minute. Why should we honor the terms of a crooked dice game? Why should we go off to the forest when the whole thing was rigged? Let's just go back and kill them all and nobody will blame us. And you know what? He was absolutely right. No one would blame them. But Yudhisthir was the more mild-mannered, the more far-sighted one. And he said, this is all not, you're looking at the remote cause. You're seeing the immediate cause. Durya Dunn and his cronies and their jealousy. But think of the fact that God is fully controlled. He's fully present. So no matter what, our advice is keep your joy. If things don't work out in the natural, you know what that means? It means that Krishna has something supernatural in your future. Problem is, that we often try to pray away what it is that God or Krishna is trying to use in our life. Krishna, I shouldn't have to put up with this condescending bureaucrat. He treats me like dirt. He irritates me. I'd like nothing better than to give him a piece of my mind. Have you thought about the fact that maybe Krishna put him there on purpose to do a work in you? to test your quality. You may not like it, but that stuffy bureaucrat may just be an opportunity for you to grow. 
like sandpaper that can rub the edges off of you. Here's a Lao Tzu quote. If you want to awaken all of humanity, then awaken all of yourself. If you want to eliminate the suffering in the world, then eliminate all this dark and negative in yourself. Truly the greatest gift you have to give is that of your own self-transformation. But Krishna God uses the people in our life, our spouse, our children, friends, co-workers, to show us areas in which we need to improve. We pray, Krishna, you got to change these kids. They're driving me out of my mind. No. <laughs> the key is to look inside, say, Krishna, how can I change? How can I learn how to be more patient, more understanding? more forgiving. Don't ever ask Krishna to change somebody else before first asking him to change you. Chiru, my wife knows all the buttons to push. Well, can I suggest that if you change yourself, those buttons won't work anymore. She can push all she wants. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Every time you overlook an offense, you're passing the test, burning off impurities. Every time you bite your tongue, every your sights on passing some tests, doing the right thing when it's hard. How about being happy for a coworker who got the promotion that you wanted? Staying calm in traffic when your plane leaves in 30 minutes. <laughs> and when you do the right thing, the harder it is, the more radical a reward you're going to reap. In fact, any time we go higher, the senses have to go lower. And we'll never see our character fully develop if we're getting our way all the time on our timetable. Next time, you find yourself in an uncomfortable situation, instead of fighting it, have the attitude, I must need this purification or Krishna would not have allowed it. Now here's a tip. Most often, we get tested in the area of our greatest weakness. If you struggle with jealousy, don't be surprised if you notice everyone who has more than you. Looking forward to a weekend in Panguitch? That is until your coworker tells how she's going to Europe for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Krishna will put you right in the middle of the fire to see what you're made out of. Are you going to be happy for them going to Europe? Or you're going to think, not fair. I work harder than they. I go to church every Sunday. Why aren't I going to Europe? and them going to Panguitch. <laughs> now, these uncomfortable situations are not coincidences. Krishna puts them in our lives so we can see the problem and burn off the impurities. For some reason, for this lecture, the pictures and characters from the office come to mind quite often. I don't know why. So some tests come again and again. The sooner you deal with it, the better off you're going to be. And I love to tell you that if you deal with these things, if you let Krishna refine you, then all the annoying things will just disappear. But unfortunately, I'd be misleading you because that's not reality. However, what will happen is that when your quality improves, these things won't bother you anymore. You'll stay in peace. You'll be able to say, because I've worked with Krishna, to express appreciation. It's not a coincidence. It's a test. Krishna is trying to teach us to trust him in a greater way, not to rely on other people's approval. Krishna is working something in you, growing you up, getting you prepared for greater things. When I first started preaching Krishna consciousness in 1970 in Australia, where I joined, I used to get all kinds of compliments. As soon as one Sunday feast lecture ended, I would be all fired up about the next Sunday's talk. But as time went on, less and less compliments came. <laughs> I thought I was getting better, 
but it started to seem as if the better the message was, the less people would have to say about it. One Sunday, I spoke what I thought had been my best message so far, and afterwards, I was just waiting for everybody to tell me how much they enjoyed it. Not one person said a single word. What am I saying? Sometimes Krishna will cause people not to give you something so that you can grow up. I've come to realize these are tests. He's teaching me not to rely on what everybody thinks, not to live just to please people, but instead be my best, knowing that he's pleased with me. I heard of a minister who struggled in the same area. He lived for how many compliments he'd get and how many people liked his message. One Sunday after what he thought was a particularly good sermon, he asked the man in back who sold his CDs how many CDs of his lectures had been sold after the sermon that week. The man said, I didn't sell any this week, but someone returned the sermon CD from last week. These are tests. If your spouse is not complimenting you like they used to, it's a test. If you're doing all the work, not getting the credit, it's a test. People are overlooking you. Just take it in stride and burn off those impurities. What is that, Krishna or God, growing you up? So easy to get a chip on your shoulder and think, nobody appreciates me. Let's see if I do anything for you now. No, let's keep a good attitude. Say, Krishna, I'm just going to be for you, Krishna. Not for people, but for you, Krishna. I'm going to be my best every day under you. If people don't give me credit, I know you'll give me everything I need. He wants us to get our approval, our value, our worth from him. Not to be dependent on other people. People are going to let you down. People are going to be too busy. People are not always going to be there when you need them. No person can keep you cheered up, feeling good about yourself, except for Krishna or God. We start out, after all, like babies. Initially, we need all that support, all that praise, all that attention, all that appreciation. But that's just for a season. There'll come a point where Krishna says in our lives, it's time to grow up. I want you to depend on me, not on people. And those crutches of appreciation and compliments, Krishna will gradually remove them. That person who kept you cheered up for so many years moved to another city. That other person who called always to compliment you, Krishna is saying, you don't need that person. And the calls have lessened and lessened and finally stopped. What is that? Krishna is saying, I'm your approval. I'm your validation. I'm your friend. I love you. And I will never, ever move to another city or forget about you or neglect you or let you down. I'm in your heart and I've been in there forever. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. And if Krishna did not remove those crutches, we'd never grow up and become all that he has created us to be. We've all had seasons in our life when everything seems to go our way, just falls willy-nilly into place. When we first came to the Hare Krishna movement or the Catholic Church or the Mormon Church, it seemed like everything lined up so perfectly. The signs were right. The initial chanting is so powerful, it transports us to a blissful state that we've never felt before. We open our scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, and what should appear before us, but the exact verse that we needed to hear, we just knew that Krishna consciousness, Mormonism, Catholicism, was the real thing. That's great for a season, but the truth is, Krishna is not gonna let you stay a baby. There will be a point when he starts to remove what was really pampering. There's a point where he wants us to get out of the wading pool, the baby pool, and learn how to swim. If you're not getting what you used to get, your prayers aren't answered on the first day like they were before. The approval from that person is not forthcoming. 
You open the scripture expecting some words of upliftment and encouragement, and you read, the envious and mischievous sink down to the lowest species of life. (laughs) Take it as a compliment. Krishna is growing you up, maturing you, getting you ready for an amazing future. And as long as you remain a child, you're never going to receive your inheritance. But as you grow up, as we let Krishna make us and mold us, the seeds of greatness that he's placed on the inside are going to take root and grow. Learn to encourage yourself. Stay faithful, though your prayers are not being answered on your timetable. Don't rely on other people for approval, validation. Get up every morning and say, thank you, Lord, that you approved me. You made me in your image. You breathed your life into me. You looked upon me as a masterpiece. The more we grow, the less dependent we become on what other people think or do, what they give us or what they don't give us. I'm guessing some of you today are frustrated. There's a prayer not being answered, a person not giving you the approval like they used to. You feel as if Krishna has forgotten all about you. Our message today is just the opposite. He's closely watching you. It's a test of your quality. He wants to see what you're made of. Now is not the time to think, what's the use? Things are never going to change. I'm stuck here. No. It's only a test. Krishna is burning off the impurities, qualifying you for eternal life. Now is the time more than ever to dig in your heels and sow a seed of obedience. Do the right thing in spite of what somebody's not giving you. Keep praying even though it feels like Krishna went on vacation. Keep believing even though your mind is telling you it's never going to change. If you do that, you'll pass the test, burn off the impurities, and see a radical harvest. The uncomfortable situation you are in is not permanent. It's only for a season. Keep moving forward. Don't fight against everything that's hard. Let Krishna or God make you and mold you. Work with him. Be willing to make improvements, adjustments. Krishna only wants to burn off the impurities so that we can become the men and women of character that he created us to be. And as you grow, Krishna God is going to release the inheritance that he has laid up for you. He's going to favor you in greater and greater ways, going to bring you into supernatural opportunities because you pass the tests. That means that you're rising higher Victory is waiting for you in this life, in next life. You're going to go back to home, back to God. If any part of this message resonates with you, raise your hands in the air and say along with me, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you for your kind attention. There'll be plenty of time for questions downstairs during dinner. But right now we're going to end up our program here with Jai Krishna coming from over there. And you're welcome to stand and join us uh, towards the front of the room.
Vishnupad, Paramansa, Paramakacharya, Ter, Shishimad, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Srila Prabhupada, Kija, Mata Gota Vaishnav, Inda Kija, Namachara Shri Hari Rastakur, Kija, Premsi Gosu, Gisha Chaitanya Prabhu, Nityananda, Shri Advaita, Giradhar, Shiva Sadi Gaur, Bhaktivedanta, Kija, Sisi Rastakur,